Chico, you went to a HBCU. I did. What's the most fun you had over there? <sighs> Shit. Just gotta pick one, 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 the most fun. All four years. Oh my god. That's yeah, tough. that's tough. That's tough. Nah, fuck it. Yeah, make it hard, man. <laughs> make, make, <laughs> the just most make it. fun ever. Yeah. In all my years of being, man. You know what? It was. Freshman year. Of course. Yeah, freshman freshman year. year. Every single freshman time, year. bro. Freshman year. You know what I mean? The, the, the little, one of the little spots that, uh, you know, you're like, you know, your little calf, but it's like mm -hmm. the upgraded calf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We left the door <laughs> unlocked, yeah. nigga, and we went in there and got all the drinks out that bitch, nigga. <laughs> yeah. We was walking back and forth across the parking lot with bags of drinks. Niggas had drinks the whole first semester, man. That was the funnest <laughs> shit ever. <laughs> that was the funnest shit ever, man. Yeah, was, right, you man. just confessed to this right. shit. I mean, hey, right. I didn't say I was there. I just said I was there. <laughs> You saw yeah, it happen. I, mean, I saw it happen. <laughs> All right, what would you say the most fun you had? That's easy. Howard Homecoming freshman year when Drake came 2012. out. 2012. All right, dude. Oh, my that. God, bro. Yeah, you, was was you passed out, dude. Nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I prepared for this. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> he I ran crazy. back upstairs. Guys, guess who's coming? <laughs> Drake. <laughs> Drake. <laughs> Drake. He didn't go to school oh, all week. He was just laying there, man. Like, <laughs> shit is... I had the poster on the ceiling. <laughs> hey, yo. No, just leave Drake. Leave Drake. Poster on the ceiling. Jeez. Well, what would you, would you say? Man. Favorite memory? I would say, uh, I think it was a junior year, we did a party bus. Oh my God. It was somebody's birthday, and it was like invite only. I think it was 10 guys and probably like 40 girls. It was crazy. Yeah, no, it was That's why I picked the school that I went to. <laughs> True story. It was crazy. I went on a college tour. I went, uh, all the, we went from all the, all the HBCUs from DC mm -hmm. to Florida. Oh uh, yeah. And uh, I, I went to a and T, but they was on fall break. So it was like, it was quiet, man. I'm like, that shit dead as fuck, <laughs> bro. And I went to Winston and seen 20 girls before I seen one dude. I was like, this all right right here. <laughs> this is okay right here. This is, this is somewhere I could be, you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, but this is the best decision I ever made, man. One of the best decisions I ever made was going to an HBCU, especially for me, but we're, you know, we're getting into all that. Mm. Definitely. Get into all that. Well, you know, it's, it's very important that people support HBC. Yes, very, very much so. That's why we got these guys over here with us. Because they know a little bit about that. Yeah. They know a lot about it, actually. What's up? You ready to jump it on? Let's do it. Hey, man, welcome back to the Black Market. The Black Market. Yeah, we, we started with black excellence. Now it's we, the black market. We didn't spread it enough excellence around <laughs> that it's a market. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was just... black and excellence, we mocked it, so now we got the black market. Because we mocking all the black excellence. Well, you know. Because we're trying to make things a little more profitable. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's like a Walmart of black people. Yeah. You know. So check this out, man. We got, you remember them dope ass HBCU pieces we was wearing on the BET Awards? Yes, I do. Bro, these are the masterminds behind this brand. Yes, I know you've been seeing their work all over the places, support HBCU with the dope sweaters and hoodies and t shirts and everything. All the celebrities got them and, you know, all in the airport with them. Let me make sure I introduce y'all to my man Corey, my man Justin. Yes, sir. Yeah. We like, to, we like to keep it real informal, make it feel like they know you already. Man. Man, nah, y'all give yourself. Like, let them know who y'all are, man, and what, yeah, what it is. Uh, my name is Corey, uh, one of the CEOs of Support by Colleges. Yeah. Went to Howard University and started this brand right on campus. You know, looking for a little extra money and started making some t shirts, and next thing you know, 
here we are a few years later just running as a business, something that started as a hobby, so. Yeah. And it's taking off. It's taking crazy. off, man. First of all, thank you guys, because y'all made us some money when y'all went to the BET Awards. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate y'all, boy. Appreciate that. Man. Really so you said you got my cut. I'm just saying, though. I'm just you saying, we made y'all money. We need some of that money. I don't yeah. remember the contract. We got a track. We got a track. Oh, yeah, a track. Yeah, I know. Y'all got y'all business in order. Okay. Your people call my people. You got to find the invoice? Yeah, I know. No, man, much love to y'all, and we appreciate y'all. You know, reaching out to us and making sure we had, you know, had it in hand to right. throw it on. It's nothing like right. support, you know, you brothers like that. That's exactly what we wanted to hear by putting it on, bro. Because right. that's our mission is to yeah, help lift each other up, man. Right. So, so we appreciate that. Sure. Sure. My question. Just to know that some, some black men ate off of that, man. It made the whole to, shit work. Y'all went to the, you know, I would say, as far as being illustrious, the most illustrious HBCU. Sure, yeah. You know what I mean? As far as status is people. You're gonna catch hell for saying No, I'm just saying. <laughs> but as you far know. As the, the perception, you know what I mean? Is and for you to go to the one that I would say gets the most publicity and the most sure. recognition of all HBCUs, why support black colleges? Because Howard gets a tremendous amount of support. So what made y'all go with that as this, this? Yeah, and how did you end up in Howard? Yeah, so I mean, we both have pretty interesting stories. My mom actually went to Howard. Okay. So it was funny because she went to Howard, but all my life I heard about a and Legacy. a and yeah, A&T, because I'm from Greensboro. So, um, you know. Salute um, to the Aggies. Yeah, shout out to a and the Aggies. I almost went there. That was my second choice. <laughs> but um, I got to Howard, and I went for a random visit. And I think it was like accepted students day, mm -hmm. one of those mm -hmm. days where the grass is cut, <laughs> all the food is stocked, they got, they, everybody dressing up. and. I just stepped on campus and I just felt like I was at home. Like, it was crazy. And I visited a lot of schools and just nothing made me feel like how it made me feel when I stepped on campus. And I was like, I gotta be here. And so I wanted to get away from my mom too and my family because <laughs> it's just a lot. In college, I wanted to be free. Right. And so um, I was like, man, this is the decision I want to make. And then my mom went there. She was the only person to graduate from college um, in my family. So I just wanted to, you know, pay my respects to her and make sure I was So that was it. My, my story is pretty simple. Yeah, mine's totally different. Yeah. So, <laughs> I was the first person in my family to go to college in general. So. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Appreciate that. So, actually, I was getting a haircut. Granted, this was damn near like eight years ago, probably. <laughs> I was getting a haircut, and it wasn't even my actual barber. You know when you got your replacement barber because your barber not really there? Standby. So, my standby. So, he was like, what schools did you get accepted to? I told him, Uni uh, University of North Texas, Baylor University, and then Howard. And then he was like, man, go to Howard. And then I didn't know about fraternities, sororities, nothing, HBCUs, anything. And I was like, you know what? It's the one that's out of state. Let me go get that out of state experience. Bro, why the fuck would you listen to your all <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Bro, Which like, is crazy. It ain't even your first bar. <laughs> it's yeah, your man. side bar. He should have been. Yeah, Facts. Your backup he bar. Been. He's probably watching him. this now like, nigga, you owe me some money. <laughs> Bro, you owe like, everybody, man. <laughs> Bro, watch this motherfucker, man. <laughs> but no, nah, that was a story, bro. You still now did you like you still get cut by the bar? Nah, no? I ain't got a haircut in so long. But look, I seen him, I went back home and I seen him in the club randomly, so I had to go up to my Hey, brother, appreciate you making that suggestion in my senior year because it really shaped my life, like, going to HBCU. So. That's what it means when they say it take a village, bro. Yeah, you don't never know where you might hear some good shit from. Right, all the way. So why support black colleges in that environment? Yeah, because, I mean, even with my story, you know, that was something I didn't know about at all. So when I got there and I realized that it was so much black excellence and so many people that looked like me trying to do the same thing, like we need to bring awareness to this because there's no reason that my mom, my grandma, myself, and all the other kids in my high school didn't know about it at all. So that was the motive behind it. Well, at okay. least for, my, for me. Yeah, I mean, kind of similar, but you think about it, when you're getting recruited to go to colleges or you know people are reaching out, all this is college fairs, college fairs, and it ain't no cool way to show HBCUs. Like people weren't putting it out there and promoting it. Back in the day, you had Martin, Fresh Prince. They used to wear the HBCU stuff, Queen Latifah, but then that kind of like 85 stopped. 85 Sounds Room. 85 Sounds Room. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Like, so Drink now it. we was like, you know, we want to bring it back in a way that people, we can relate to our people. And so merchandise is a way that we can do so. And I had just happened to make a random shirt on campus that everybody liked. And so we was like, man, we can use this and we can take it to this school, this school, this school. And then we were like, well, let's make something that all the schools can wear. Mm -hmm. And then that's when Support by Colleges kind of came. So what was the first t-shirt? It was a t-shirt, it was a Howard University shirt, um, and it was just like a logo, some pinstripes, 
um, just like a regular Howard shirt with a, with a logo. And then my friends from AT was like, oh, let me get one for homecoming. So we made an AT one. My friends from FAMU was like, oh, let me get one for FAMU. And so I'm like, man, I gotta make something that everybody can get. So we made a, uh, it was our logo and some Kente print. And on the back, it had all of the schools listed. That mm -hmm. way everybody could feel like they could be a part of it. And so yeah. that's kind of how I got started. So when did y'all start making money from it? Like, man, to where so, it was profitable? <laughs> we were, so we were making a lot of money in college. So me and Justin used to throw parties. Mm -hmm. So we already knew how to sell things. At parties, you're just selling the same experience over and over and over. <laughs> right. So we already knew how to make money selling something. And so we were making money in college. I couldn't tell you the profit margins. I was just, I knew I had a pocket full of money. It's black excellence right there. Hey, it's black excellence. Very rare amongst HBCU students. That's a fact. A pocket full of money. You got a pocket full of problems. Money happens. So that is good. And so it was like one of those things where I was like, oh, this, this could actually go. And after school, after we got out of school, we kind of stopped it and then just recently bought it back about three years ago. Mm -hmm. So it was one of those things in college, it was cool. And then when I got off campus, me and him both started just doing like working regular jobs. And so it was one of those things we kind of let go. And then, you know, three years ago, we was like, we got to bring this back. That's a yeah. good question for you, because I think a lot of HBCU students go through that process of, you know, a lot of us are the first people to go to college in our families, yeah. you know what I mean? And a lot of people don't come from the legacy of having right. collegiate, you know, experience. So right. you follow the mold to where you go to school, you graduate, you go get a yeah. job. Yeah, what was the point where you realized, man, fuck this shit? <laughs> oh, I know mine. Hey, what's up? I'm Carlos Miller. It's time to get off the couch and get back to work. If your tool needs an upgrade, head to bluetooth.com. The process is simple. Sign up at bluetooth.com, consult with one of the licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. If you can benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and ship direct so it's cheaper than a pharmacy. We got a special deal for all our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use the promo code BLACK at checkout and just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code BLACK. to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Freshman year, bro. Freshman year, because we was making so much money. I skipped a grade, so I was 17 in college. And then, bro, you talking about 16, 17, making 10, 15,000 dollars a month from parties. Yeah. I was like, bro, why am I here? This don't make no sense. So he I tried to drop out every year. I tried to drop every out single every year. single year. So, but then I was just like, it don't make sense for me to be here because I can learn more outside of the university. Like we learn in business from someone who's never owned a business before. Like it didn't make sense to me. So we started our own business and started making money. And that's when it was just like man, I don't need to be here to do this, but, you know. So you didn't get a regular job, ever? So I've had two regular jobs ever in my life. I'm the worst employee ever. I, had, I, worked, at shoe, <laughs> I worked at Shoe Carnival, and they would tell me, like, hey, your job for the first hour is to sweep, and it would take me from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and I'll sweep the whole thing, just going slow, like, just a terrible employee. And then, I, like... <laughs> <laughs> so then, but then look, so then afterwards when I graduated, I had one more job doing digital marketing and then like six months in, I was like, this is impossible for me to like take directions from other people telling me when I can go on vacation and things like that. So I just quit and then I just started being an entrepreneur from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me it was kind of different. So we actually, uh, when we moved out to Atlanta, I moved out randomly to Atlanta and um, I got a job with Tyler Perry. So um, I was like, I called Justin, I'm like, Justin, come out here, they give this free money. We doing social media marketing and branding. And so it was and a Tyler, time. like, hey, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that shit, bro. <laughs> Let these motherfuckers think I'm giving away money. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, that, that work was easy for us. Like, we, we marketing and brand so much, it was so easy for us. And so um, we made our own terms. I was like, I want to work from home. I want an office. And they gave us everything we asked for. And so it got to a point where they started asking for more and more. And I was like, man, I feel like they asking for too much based off of what I came in saying that I wanted. And so... It got to a point one day, we started doing the clothing brand again. We was like, we should start making the hoodies again and stuff. And we started making it. And then we just started seeing money coming in, like, easily. Like, people was like, where y'all been at these past few years? And, and I was like, yeah, it's time to quit. Yeah. And so <clears throat> we walked away from a job at Tyler Perry. And everybody was like, y'all crazy, y'all crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, I explained to people today, like, we were making 100K plus a year. But now, like, we can make 100K in a day now. 
So it's like, some people have that mindset of like, oh, I got to stay here because it's guaranteed money. Like, I'd rather bet on myself and see how much I can run it up. Hell that's yeah. Tyler Perry ain't going to forget that you quit on him either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you already tell the motherfuckers you're giving away money to. He's going to be sitting there <laughs> just like this. <laughs> You gonna bring the B out? All right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Play about and it. I guys. think that's something that you know I promote that all the time. I, you know, when I graduated, I went to get a job where I did my internship at, and they told me you'd be making six dollars and twenty five cent an hour part time. <laughs> I was like, shit. Because right. I, you know, I've always been a hustler. I've been making my own money for a long time. So I told myself I'd much rather be broke and struggling, and building my own legacy, right. than be broke and struggling, hoping somebody recognize the work ethic and right. giving me a shot to move up. Right. So I think a lot of us at HBCU specifically have a fear because we don't have too many examples that are there yeah. that have done it. You know what I mean? That really, you know, you got people that are telling you, follow the instructions of what you're supposed right. to do. Get this degree, get a job, and, Man. you know, pay loans for the rest of your exactly. life. Exactly. And it's, it's like to see you guys as entrepreneurs that came from black schools and then, you know, your story sounds super successful. So did y'all have any pitfalls? Oh. Like, Man, did we? There's so many, where like, <laughs> where, where we start at? I mean, you know, you got stuff from when we were in business, like manufacturers running off on us, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 here and there. The plug? Bro. The plug. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got, like, just not really, because in entrepreneurship, you really don't understand how to do certain things until you get into that field. So we had 30 employees at one point, and I didn't know. I'm just a kid from, you know, Houston, Texas, and then we get 30 employees. I'm trying to figure out how to manage people and, you know, HR and then all of this different stuff. And then, you know, just random stuff happening here and there that we just wasn't, weren't prepared for, you know. You don't know what you don't know. And so yeah. until it happens, then you be like, oh, I need to learn this. I think one of the biggest things that we ran into was uh, last year, right before Black Friday. Oh, yeah. Like, probably like a month before Black Friday, we had just got all our inventory in. It would, Atlanta, it like rained like seven days straight. Yeah. Like, I don't know what was going on. It rained so much and our whole warehouse flooded. Yeah. We lost like $30,000 worth of merchandise. Mind you, right before Black Friday, right. and most of that stuff came from overseas. That's yeah. a month process, two month process. Mind you, it was during yeah, COVID. We don't. When, right. when, <laughs> when shipping was even longer because of COVID. Right. And so uh, that, that day we, we said, we fed up with this place. We, uh, we ended up getting rid of the inventory and buying a warehouse like a day later and ended up moving. And then Black Friday, we had our first million dollar uh, mm. week. Yeah. And y'all keep running it up on there. Yeah. <laughs> Do y'all get support from black colleges? Oh yeah, yeah all the time. Sure. And we support them like outside of just like donations because anytime we sell something with a school logo, they get 7% of the sale. That's dope as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, y'all doing this shit right. Yeah. Hey, y'all doing this shit right, bro. For yeah, real. so we do that, but then also like, for instance, we talk about like, uh, we try to help recruit the basketball players to the schools. Mm -hmm. So like all the top recruits, they like hitting us up like, hey, what you think about this school? I'm like, go. If it's an HBCU, go. And the coaches are like, you know, put me in contact. Yeah. We're just trying to help everybody. Like we're trying to get I don't know our if you can do that shit. Schools. I just saw so, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, one man man? name that played for the, uh, <laughs> the, the Jazz. He had on, I think he had on one of y'all. Oh, oh uh, Donovan, Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell yeah. had on like a, one of the jackets. Yeah, one of the HBC. It's yeah. a lot of players, and so um, most people don't, well, some people know, like, we have a real close relationship with Chris Paul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was just about to say that. Chris, yeah. Chris is a good dude. A great guy. Sure. So he started this thing during the um, NBA. Went to Salem, too. Went to Salem yeah, State. Yeah, from Winston State. <laughs> in the world. And he's you know actually that. enrolled he's in Winston State. Yeah. He's actually enrolled. So, you know, he's doing this thing, and he has a class with Harvard and A&T. He's doing a lot of work that people don't know Facts. about. Oh, I know about it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm familiar. He, um, during, when they came back from COVID and they played in the bubble, um, he did this sneaker tour with us where basically every week or every game he would have a different HBCU on the shoe. Mm -hmm. And so we would feed him information and send him merchandise to match the HBCU. So he might have on some blue, light blue and uh, white shoes with a Spelman t-shirt and then we would make him a graphic that says, Spelman College was founded in so and so so and we yeah. did the whole tour. And then players like Jason Tatum, Zion Williamson, Donovan Mitchell, all these guys were like, hey, where are you getting this stuff from? And he really just put the whole NBA on, which ended up leading us to Atlanta. We had the All-Star game here last year. Mm -hmm. um, and they hit us up like, I see what you've been doing with Chris Paul. Like, I want you to be a part of the NBA All-Star uh, game. And we literally um, gave all the merch to the players and did a whole HBCU segment. It was extremely amazing. But Chris Paul was the, the reason why that happened. For sure. Salute to Chris. Yes, yeah, so sir. Look, man, sure you, hit Chris for you sure. know exactly <laughs> where the trap is, man. And you know we fuck with you. Look at this. <laughs> I don't even know what school this is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, 
But uh, like, are you guys thinking about expanding into? You know, you have a lot of uh, of us that support a lot of high end brands. Yeah. You know, a lot of high end stuff. You know, paid hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. for. You know, clothes that are made for European whiteness. You know what I mean? <laughs> so have they gonna hear this and be like, "God, oh, it's meant for me." <laughs> yeah, exactly. So have you guys ever thought about venturing into some high end stuff? Yeah. I mean, still with the brand, or are you thinking of just separating and making some high end stuff with the the infrastructure that you built is amazing. Yeah. So. No, that, that's one thing we've been thinking about since we got all the data from our customers. Now we can expand into any type of avenue as long as it's in that realm. So we we're thinking about something like called the Black Ivy League and then doing, you know, high-end type of pieces. So that's something we've been thinking about for sure. Oh, all the way. Mm -hmm. All the way. That's smart. You know what I mean? That's smart. So, like, do you guys, being as though I'm thinking that this year the homecomings are probably going to be a little, they but they're going to be back. You right. know what I mean? They might not be all the way back. But, yeah. like, have you guys ever thought about doing a campaign that's specifically geared towards HBCU homecomings? Like, oh, yeah. stuff that's... You know what I mean? That's that's you know, and involved with the brand. But I just say that because you know, if you go to these homecomings, which we've been to, I went to a HBCU, but we didn't perform the damn no, every homecoming. <laughs> Everyone. So every homecoming we, we were at see, Yandia. Yeah, we see like just how the culture of HBCU is specifically yeah. during that weekend. Yeah. So like, do you think that putting something together for each school, one. you know what I mean? And maybe putting it like to where people post, you know what I mean? What yeah. they got on and what they doing. Like, I think that'd be dope for y'all to do just because you already got the infrastructure and just, Thanks. you know, making homecoming pieces like, you know what I mean? And maybe a competition or something because, you know, we all go back and forth about right. which one no, is the greatest. Right. You know what I mean? Personally, I, I got to give it to A&T because I've been to Howard. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. I've been to Howard. <laughs> I'm a solid. DC nigga. I grew up around Howard. Yeah. And Howard is more, you know what I mean? Like you said, it's the Ivy League home. Yeah. You, you come out there, you ain't got on the mink, nigga. You <laughs> just ain't looking at you. you know what I mean? But A&T is the, the motherfuckers out there taking shots with the police. Yeah. No, <laughs> type of then you so got Darren really, hosting everything. Yeah, man, of course. Yeah, 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 everything baby, yeah, you know, that's the thing. Those people people, that's what I mean about the homecomings, because every school has their Darrens and their yeah. Chicos or B-Dots and these yeah. people who are imprinted on the campus that, you know what I mean, host everything and, and yeah. bring the culture to the campus and each generation has that person. Yeah. So you guys, you know, tapping in with those people, man, is brilliant it's for y'all. It's extremely important and, and luckily we had built, like, like B-Dot and my mom used to babysit B-Dot when he was younger. Oh, that's <laughs> so I knew him for a long time and then I met Darren because one of my guys, Matt Summers, he's at Alpha at a &T, he used to host everything with Darren. And so man, I know they kind of went in. Salute the man. And, and then Jay Murphy went to Howard while we was there. He started hosting everything. So it kind of just brought it together. But last year with COVID, we was like, how can we help the HBCUs? No, that's where they make a lot of the money is homecoming. Mm -hmm. All them people on campus. And so what we did, we did a virtual homecoming actually. And so um, we had Darren and uh, mm. Pretty V host. Yeah. And then we had um, 2 Chains, Mulatto, Moneybag Yo, um, Black Joe oh, and stuff, Art Linux. Yeah. We got a lineup all out of pocket. I spent $500,000, <laughs> got all of them together. And uh, it was no funding. We Nobody picked us up to, to stream. We reached out to BET. We reached out to everybody. Nobody picked us up. And we ended up, uh, you know, we actually won two awards. We won a Webby yeah. and another award for um, online performances or something like that. Yeah. It was, I didn't even know those things existed. <laughs> but um, we gave money to the HBCs. We gave scholarships. And we just let the community feel that we were still supporting them. So um, we're going to do something like that again this year. And then every year we do it. Thank you. <laughs> Every year we do a homecoming tour too. So we're we're, that's gonna, there, that's yeah, we're that's trying to hit 20 schools this year. Um, we always hit A&T, uh, Winston, Howard, FAMU, um, and Hampton. But now we're trying to hit like 16 to 20 schools. Um, and we're going to show up, do a pop-up, and educate the people, sell some merchandise, have some fun. And what can they reach out to y'all? Like, we got people who, you know... Want to oh, support yeah. black colleges? Yeah, so our yeah. website is supportblackcolleges.org, and then our Instagram is just supportblackcollege. Yeah. Has it, is it any... Schools y'all haven't been to that you want to hit? Like, one that you're excited about going to that you mm. haven't been to? That I haven't hit? Uh, I want to go to Winston. We ain't, we ain't been there. Winston plenty of times. Um, we, we never vended out there, like, during yeah, homecoming. Oh, damn. Yeah, I've been there. I mean, it was just me, but. <laughs> no, y'all ain't been there since y'all been to business. Right, you know, since we've well, been there. Hey, yeah, the no. door's open. There it yeah, is. Yeah. We, gotta <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we know so many people there. We got to check in. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, we got to DP is there, too. DP Oh, yeah, yeah, that's my, yeah, it's a little DP. Remember when he first was getting started on campus. So. Yeah, we got to tap in with Winston. Yeah, all the way. Winston is, you know, to me, it's the greatest one.
that one, but you know, I know you <laughs> pretty got solid. it. Pretty solid. <laughs> you know I think I mean? uh, one HBC I want to go to is um, Southern. Yeah. Uh, oh. I've never been there, but it's where my manager graduated. Their band oh, and all that—it just seemed like it's so crazy out there. Southern or Grambling? Grambling, yeah. yeah, they, yeah, they, they seem like it's, it's different it's crazy. out there. Like so. they grill That's where fish I want to go on Monday at yeah. Grambling. Like it's, we ain't go to just, PV yet either. Oh yeah, PV too. Go to PV. No, you you love they got some beautiful times. music out there. But yeah. <laughs> make sure you go uh, go in the afternoon check out some band practice. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, the shit they be playing, you don't. You be like, nigga, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they play this different. shit every day. Like, they, they, it's some food down there, man. Yeah, yeah nah, definitely you know got to tap in with them. Right. Yeah, man, all the Texas HBCUs. What yeah. was what we did? We did Prairie View. We Texas did Southern, maybe. Texas Southern. Yeah. We oh, did yeah. A uh, and M. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, we tapped into the HBCUs, man. For y'all sure. was killing the HBCU tour. I, every like literally everywhere we went, it'd be like, oh y'all know the comedy show. And I'm like, yeah, they everywhere. <laughs> Just to know that we got love like that yeah. in a market like the college market. All right. Come on, man. Yeah, all the way. I bro. think I saw y'all spam you show. And then you know they competitive at the HBCU. Yeah. You yeah. can't do one and then I'm like, nah, hell no, nah, you yeah. gotta come over uh, here. Like, uh, all right. You got the mm. contract. Exactly. <laughs> oh, they do. Yeah, they got it. They got it. Yeah. yeah, but make sure y'all support these brothers, man. You Hell know what yeah, man. Keep doing man. what you're doing. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. This is another edition of the Black Market. Support Black College, man. Yeah, man. Get it. Yeah, man. <laughs>